So one question people might be thinking, and I say that because I'm thinking it and I'm just assuming everybody else is like me, is going, is this, is this actually a skill worth building? Or can I just kind of try and get through the second half of my life by avoiding conflict in the same way that I've done that for the first half of my life? I mean, why would I take the time to get better at managing and avoiding, but also really stepping into conflict? I think because conflict is inevitable. And so if we start in the workplace, um, think about the kind of prioritization trade-offs you're having to make right now. So I'm thinking of many of the clients I'm working with making really tough calls about if we have to lay off half of our right. employees, how do we choose who? If we can, I was talking with a client at one of the big banks and they have a very massive critically important project and they're trying to decide, do they have to put it on hold? So trade-off decisions, prioritization decisions are really a, a form of conflict. And working with one another, uh, being able to get along and, and avoiding the friction that comes with more and more and more of our work being team and cross-functional teamwork. And then just learning to advocate for ourselves, stick right. up for ourselves, get recognized, get rewarded, get promoted. All of these things require us to master conflict. So if we avoid it, uh, we, we miss out. We get into what I call conflict debt. So if we avoid these situations where we're forced to have a difficult conversation, make a difficult choice, then this debt piles up and we start to pay interest on that conversation that we should have had. Mm -hmm. But as we leave it and, and don't um, get to the other side of the conflict, uh, if we just keep stepping back from it or hiding from it, all sorts of negative things happen for, for us as individuals, for our teams, for our organizations. So it's pretty important. I mean, I know as a psychologist, the way human beings interact and show up is just part of your academic background and your and your wiring as to what you're interested. But why conflict? Why did you pick this as a thing to focus on and specialize in and then bring your teachings to the world? Because it's what I suck most at. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, yes. The yes. old, you, you teach what you most need to learn. That of sounds so course. familiar. Of course. And it was very funny when I was in graduate school, my husband, who I met in graduate school, he was taking a class on vision and almost everyone in the class didn't have 3D vision. It's this very <laughs> rare thing not to have 3D vision. Right. But, you know, everyone who didn't was suddenly studying vision. So that was me. Uh, I'm terrible at conflict, brought up in a very conflict avoidant household. Uh, and it bit me in the butt at some point as I started to manage and lead teams. So, yep, this was the book that I needed to read. So I figured I would write it and teaching it every day is a really great accountability mechanism. No kidding. No kidding. You know, Liam, when I think about how I show up in the world, I would say I just don't have that many opportunities for big conflict. Um, there's something about maybe the structures or the people in my life or the way it is that we don't get into raging fights. It just doesn't really happen that much. But there's there's just there's a lot of low level irritation. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering if what you have to teach. Uh, actually, what I think the question I want to ask you is: do you, Do you deal with? Should you be dealing with the low level irritation, or is that stuff that you should be just going? You know, I'd be the better person and step aside, and you know, stop being so petty. I'm wondering, yeah, how, I'm wondering how you feel a about great that question. Yeah. So people will often ask me, uh, you know, shouldn't I pick my battles? That mm. that expression is very common, and uh, it depends. If you can honestly say that that's irritating me, I'm I'm sort of I'm monitoring myself. I can see my heart racing or feel my palms getting sweaty. Or if you can be in touch with your own irritation at something and you can say, you know what? That's not worth being irritated over. That's more about how they're doing it. And we agree on what they're doing. So let it go. Or if you can honestly let it go, then I would say do that as much as possible. Right. Because we do fight over things, particularly how somebody does things when we agree on what they're doing. Um, that's just not a good use of anyone's time or energy. Okay. But the big caveat is most of the time, I think we can't let things go. And so I do this little thought experiment with people. I say, okay, imagine that your boss asks you to send out a presentation to all your colleagues on your team. And, the, and he says, you know, it's really important you get some feedback. And so the, the first message back to come from your teammates is from the person 
uh, that has been annoying you a lot lately. <laughs> and you open the message. Oh, I know who that person is. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. It never takes audiences long to remember who that person is. And you open it and it says, I got the draft presentation. I caught a couple of mistakes. I have some ideas for how to make it better and I'll come by your desk at three o'clock. And most people sort of in the audiences when I'm speaking yell out that this makes them feel, you know, angry or frustrated or defensive or yep. these sorts of things. And um, most of them report, you know, trying to get a last minute dentist appointment at three o'clock rather than having to have the interaction. <laughs> and then I right. say to them, okay, now I want you to imagine that the second email that comes in is from the person on your team who you just trust implicitly, your, mm. your favorite person on the team. Sometimes it takes them longer to think of that person. Mm -hmm. um, and I say, okay, you click open in the message and it says, I got the draft presentation you sent. I caught a couple of mistakes. I have some ideas for how to make it better and I'll come by at three o'clock. And, you know, universally people will say that when their friend catches the mistakes, they feel relieved and grateful. When their friend has some ideas for how to make it better, they're excited and interested and they're filling up the jelly beans and their candy dish for right. three o'clock. Right. And so the problem with letting irritants go or not addressing them is that every one of those irritants gets added to that filter in your brain that decides right. whether the email is nasty or nice, whether it's um, mm. you know helpful or hurtful. And so if we are only pretending that we're picking our battles, if, if we're you know holding a grudge or carrying resentment, we're going to experience that person, every interaction with that person, an email, a walk past them in the hall, a meeting with them, a right. conference call, every one of those things differently. And that's what scares me is that so often we, we tell ourselves a good story that we're picking our battles, but really what we're doing is holding a grudge and grudges multiply like debt, right? That mm -hmm. conflict debt idea soon we'll be paying uh, huge sums and then you will get a blowout. Then you will get something that's really unpleasant and unhealthy. So that's my caveat. If you can uh, be tuned into yourself and honestly say, I don't think this matters. This is something right. I'm going to let go of. Great. But if all you're doing is adding it to your conflict debt, you're really setting things up poorly for, for the future. Hey, it's MBS here. If you've got a question you'd like me to answer on video, leave it in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to it.